Hello and welcome to Season 7, Episode 13 of the Ubuntu Podcast. It's Wednesday the 25th of June and we're going to discuss what's been happening in the news and in the Ubuntu community. If you're listening live, you can send us messages using the chat thing on the website and in the hash UPC IRC channel. I'm Laura and joining me this week are Mark. Hello. Alan. Hello. And Tony. Good evening. How are you doing? Great. Pretty good. We're all here again. I know. We are. Is this some sort we of... keep doing this <laughs> until someone tells us to stop. <laughs> well, I was just wondering if this was some sort of record. Because, you know. Oh, what, of us all being here at the same time? Oh, well, this is episode 13. and we're so... Well, presumably that's going to continue for the rest of the season. I know I'm going to be here. Yeah, me too. And like, me. Really? I've, organi- <laughs> I've organised my holiday around this show. And me. I've organised all of my family and my extended family to go on holiday around this show. How yeah. about you, Tony? Uh, I'm, I'm... <laughs> oh, okay. Good to hear it. Glad you're committed as well. So how many weeks have we got to learn how to set this up? <laughs> Not enough. <laughs> <laughs> An inadequate number of weeks. Uh, right, there we go. Should we go on with the news? Yes. Yes. And now it's time for the news. And Amazon have released their first, oh, sorry, they have announced their first smartphone, the Amazon Fire Phone. Cool. Yeah. Is it? It's what the marketplace needs, isn't it? And More phones. And more Absolutely operating. does. Needs more diversity. Yes. It's completely diverse, isn't it? It's completely different from anything else. Well, it's, it? it's, it's uh, running Fire OS, a brand new OS, which is wow. nothing like you've ever seen before, except it's a fork of Android. And I bet oh. it's annoying for Firefox OS. Oh, yeah. I never Ooh. spotted that. No. <laughs> I bet they have. <laughs> <laughs> huh. Dear. Okay. Mm. Yeah. So, so, what's the unique selling point of this of this delightful device from uh, from Android? So, At Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> there I go already. Um, so, they have a few sort of unique Amazony features in there. There's um, uh, Firefly, which what is that? Lets you take photos of things. Um, and like identifying information on things like barcodes or product numbers, and it tells you about the product and presumably lets you buy them on Amazon. My That's awesome all... Sony phone does that. Yeah, so the Amazon app has done that for ages. Oh. But I guess this is built into the device because it's from Amazon. Yeah, and maybe, I don't know, maybe there's more stuff. The, can... I know the Amazon app, I, I did this uh, at least two and a half, three years ago because uh, uh, one of my coworkers uh, helped me with this. I uh, I showed him the Amazon app and showed him that you could take a photo of anything, not just a photo of a barcode, but actually you could just take a photo of anything. Yeah. yeah. And it it was sent away to the mechanical Turk or you know something somewhere that would come back with a shopping link that would let you buy the thing from from Amazon or a close approximation of the thing you took a photo of. And uh, I proved it worked by taking a photo of uh, a mobile phone. It was a whatever samsung galaxy thing mm. and i just took a photo of this phone and within a couple of minutes it amazon app bounced back to me and said yeah that's a galaxy s phone and uh i showed it to my co-worker and he hit the buy it now button <laughs> on my phone oh brilliant <laughs> so what's the other unique selling points um it has a thing called mayday which is their free video support which has all the slightly disturbing adverts of the guy with the irish woman yeah the the irish woman oh. and, uh, oh, the yeah slightly awkward guy who appears to be having slightly obsessed with her. Yeah, slightly yeah. obsessed with her. Someone pointed out to me recently that that um, you never see that in an Apple advert. People, uh, I mean, they talk about the genius bar and stuff, but in an Apple advert, they never say, our product is so broken, you have to ask for help. That, whereas Amazon <laughs> yes. are saying, right. there's so many problems with this that we've had to actually build in human support into the device. You can't possibly work this out for yourself. That is an interesting way of looking at it. <laughs> I hadn't considered that. And the yeah. irony is, my ordinary Kindle, I've never had any problems with. Right. Mm. Well, yeah, okay. So, yeah, chances are that you need it, probably mm. quite slim. Well, chance that I your mean, grandparents might need it, maybe. Uh, maybe. Or your, you know, yeah. But advertising that you might need it. It's kind well, of, it's, I know, it's a service mm. I'm sure some people might yeah. use. I mean, they must be assuming that most people aren't going to use it, because otherwise manning live video support for every possible user is going to be crazy. <laughs> it's full employment for the entire planet, yes. surely. Um, and yeah, the last sort of big headline feature is a thing called Dynamic Perspective, which is like 3D gestures to do with the 
the just you doing and the way you're holding the device does. Oh, different. they did a promo video be- without showing the device before the app was before the device was launched. Oh yeah, and you couldn't see the device. Yeah, and you saw people going, "Wow, that's amazing!" <laughs> and like <laughs> tilting their heads, so you knew it was something like parallax or 3D or perspective based. Yeah. But you know, without actually seeing, you didn't know if it was like there were all these like speculation that it was projecting up. It was like they they'd mastered holographic three D from a phone. I was like, no, it just kind of moves a bit when you tilt the phone. That's yeah. all it, it does. Like does. you you can tilt it to scroll instead of fl- yeah flicking with your thumb. W- wasn't there a, the three DS? The Nintendo three DS was a bit three D. Yeah, it? but that's more that's that's kind of. In inverted commas, proper 3D. Oh, right. So this isn't as good as that thing that came no, out it's kind of No, it's kind of more perspective. But it, it's it's more the gesture thing where you can, you're can you holding, reading a book, and you just, you know, you've got your hands full, but you, you're holding the device and you, you don't want to swipe or anything. You just, because your fingers obscure the screen. So you just, like, tilt the phone away from you and it scrolls. So while you're reading, you can just, like, infinite read. Rather than you know that horrible page turny thing, yeah. that's so last year. Yeah. So it's it's kind of like one of those one of those old games with the little ball in the mouth. Yeah. That's <laughs> if, you, if you tilt it too far, then you've got to try and like balance it out. That's I would imagine nightmare. many people do that. Like, let me turn the page. Oh no, too far, and then tilt it back. And I, I can I, imagine myself doing that. I flex right. my wrist every so often if I'm stuck sat in the same position for a long time reading. Mm. That would be getting really annoying. Well, this is good because this allows you to flex your wrist while you're reading. <laughs> Yeah, good point. And they think turn, of everything. Yeah, they yeah. do, and turn the page at the same time. Yeah. Well. So, uh, so now you can uh, you have a device to allow Amazon to harvest all of your data instead of Google. So yeah. there's there's a nice choice in the market. Yes. Presumably, Google gets a bit, doesn't it? No, because they're nothing to do with. No, but they well. Mm. Oh, they, they they must surely be licensing some technologies from Google and probably some from Microsoft. Oh, as well. okay. Yes. No, in terms of just the whole general patent weirdness yes. in the market. Yes. If only there was an alternative smartphone operating well, system oh. that, that didn't tie you into either of those. And it was yeah, ideally a kind of nice purpley colour. <laughs> With a hint of orange. Keep an eye out for that, listeners. Uh, moving on. A, in inverted commas, social strategist working on behalf of Microsoft has been attempting to recruit bloggers to write about Internet Explorer in exchange for money. <laughs> Fancy that. Uh, Michael Arrington, founder of TechCrunch, posted an email exchange between him and the agency in which he's invited to write about Internet Explorer's new features with reference to recent promotional websites such as Assassin's Creed Pirates Demo in return for financial compensation. I really did enjoy his reply. That, you know, it's like a big email inviting him to be part of this exciting campaign <laughs> and there's financial conversation available and his reply was just... Is this for real? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's not the kind of guy you want to get on the wrong yeah. side of, I don't think. And then I think they, they looked up who he was and apologised. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, they well, it's called AstroTurfing, isn't it? Yes. In reference to um, attempt to create grassroots support for a product or yes. cause, so apparently. Fake so, grassroots, so AstroTurf. Were they, were they talk, targeting um, not the high-profile people obviously this guy was but in general were they targeting they were, not high profile they were, bloggers or well they were profiling well they clearly had quite a lot of people on their list mm. but i think they hadn't curated the list quite well enough and there were other like technology experts in uh other competing products like people who are evangelists for mozilla who right. you know firefox and their phone both yeah. competing products for internet explorer they didn't they didn't really think this through i mean i can see why they do it because yeah. it's very hard for microsoft to shake that reputation that internet explorer has and i can see why they would want to go out and get people to uh, evangelize about how good the product is because it may well be better right yeah but than it used to be but there's <laughs> way there's ways of doing it and that seems to be uh yeah yeah not I mean, a brilliant way I know there are a number of, uh, as you may or may not know, I do uh, wedding photography, Alan. I don't know if you've picked wow. up on that from previous episodes. No. Um, th- there there are out. wedding blogs, um, and some of those have you know, promoted posts, yeah. effectively, where they're writing about a product or a service or a vendor. Oh, yeah. But they, they usually sort of stay in state, this is a sponsored post or something like that. So it's clear that it is, uh, whilst it's a real opinion, it is some somebody's paid for it or encouraged that post to be there. Yeah, I get that. And that's fair. That's open, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, well... But... but yeah. You know, sort of this seems a bit more surreptitious, a bit more subversive. It's Presumably like, they're not encouraging people to say this was paid for by Microsoft. It's like when you get um, celebrities tweeting about some product because they're being paid to tweet about it and it's not clear that they're being paid and it's not just their opinion. Right. And uh, actually, it's interesting. I saw a um, there was a, a popular post on Reddit today 
uh, by a guy who uh, was writing a guide to how he got uh, lots of money on his crowdfunding campaign. Mm. He was doing these sunglasses, and uh, he did a Indiegogo crowdfunding campaign and got lots and lots of money. And he wrote up how I got my success. And one of the things was pay uh, popular people on Twitter to mention your product. It's as simple as that, you know. You, and then, yeah, the question is, how do you find who's a popular person? There's apparently a website called <laughs> a website called FollowerWonk. Oh, there is, yeah. <laughs> I've never seen this before. Yeah. It just made me chuckle. <laughs> Anything with the word wonk in it is is great. So anyway, the uh, bloggers taking part in the scheme were invited to share their posts using the hashtag hash IE bloggers, which was quickly hijacked by people lampooning the practice. They never learn. Mm-hmm. You can't. You just can't <laughs> appropriate a. Uh, a hashtag like that people are going to abuse it and apparently microsoft responded by saying the action this action by a vendor is not representative of the way microsoft works with bloggers or other members of the media the program has been suspended i.e we paid someone else to do our dirty work <laughs> yes and we got, and we got out. found out so we'll stop that <laughs> brilliant is do they know anything about the gap in the watergate tapes either yeah. <laughs> um so next up, one of TrueCrypt's True anonymous original developers has said that a fork of the existing code base would be impossible and not a good idea. So TrueCrypt is an encryption software that the developers a few weeks ago said, don't use this software anymore. We're not going to tell you why. Pretty much. Pretty much. Yes. It was all sort of a bit abandoned and people were conspiracy theories uh, abounding about is the NSA compromised it? Is it all fundamentally flawed? Who are the anonymous developers originally? Are they all big um, you know, agencies for US government agencies? That sort of thing. Um, the developer was contacted by Matt Green, who's leading the audit of TrueCrypt's code base. Um, an alternative course of action was proposed by the developer, which was to use TrueCrypt's code base as a reference for the relevant techniques and then for a complete rewrite to be produced. Yes. Hooray, he said he was sort of, that was something that they'd wanted to do anyway. Yeah, but um, they, that he's got no objection to them using it as a sort of how-to for the techniques, which he still thinks are valid, apparently. Mm. Um, hmm. It's all very murky, isn't it? It is all a bit odd. Mm. It's interesting, isn't it? Because people are quite prepared to accept this product by anonymous developers and yeah. to use it and trust it in corporate as well as personal circumstances. Yeah, And it only takes some rumours, effectively, and a couple of statements... Well, and the actual developer himself yeah, monkeying but, with the website and screwing up all the code. Well, somebody did. Well, yeah, but yeah, as I understand it, um, Mark Green, uh, sorry, Matt Green had contact with the developer in the past, and so this was, yeah, the same person that he's contacted in the past. Mm. Well, you know, yeah. or, 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 or the, same, been... the same anonymous email address he, he'd uh, contacted. Oh, right? In the past. Yes. Yeah. GPG yes. signed, of course. Mm. Yeah, but it's kind of interesting how you can shake confidence in a piece of security software like that and yeah and how much of it is sort of smoke and mirrors and, and faith in the developers and faith in the software itself. You just have to mutter doesn't he look tired <laughs> <laughs> excellent okay what's up next it is uh everything's gone quiet a bit weird um so <laughs> opera 24 is now based on chromium's blink engine and it's been released via the project's developer stream for Linux, yes, specifically. Oh, yes, that wasn't in there, was it? Yes. Yeah. So you can now, oh, yeah. Yeah, you can now get the. It's been it's been around sort of in development for a while, but this is the first time it's been available for Linux. A previous version for Linux was what twelve or something. Oh. This is the this is the since then. This is the first build since then. I think. Right. Okay. And uh, yeah, doesn't work here. <laughs> Seg faults on startup. Works for me. Uh, yes. Uh, I did file a bug. I was a good boy. I filed a bug upstream at the uh, developer's website. But, um, yeah, apparently uh, some people rave about opera. They've, like, there's, there's almost like a religious devotion to, to opera friend over of the, the sh- years. A friend of the show, Stuart Langridge, was very impressed with this new opera release yeah. on Twitter, I saw. Yeah. And fair enough. If you know, it's your favourite piece of software, then it's great that they've released another version. The thing is, think- it feels really fast when you're using it, but I can't shake the feeling that the reason it feels really fast is because the spinner on the tab goes quicker than it does on Firefox. Brilliant. <laughs> Brilliant. We should do that in Ubuntu. Yeah. Yes. So what new features are in this uh, Opera browser? Um, I don't know, but I was just about to say that if, because it's on its, it's not on its own engine anymore, it should be easier to, fit, to develop for. Uh, well, it should be more compatible. Websites yeah. should just work in it as well. Yeah. yeah. Do you think our big clock will work in it? We'll have to ask Stuart. <laughs> <laughs> actually didn't you try it 
in, yeah, yeah, we did and it didn't work. <laughs> that, was, uh, that was that was Opera Mini on Android though, uh, so okay. that's probably yeah. not a fair comparison. That's oh, not using Blink. File a bug. So it's got a feature called Discover. Yes. Um, and this directs you to sites and articles based on your cl- location and specified categories. I don't like the sound of that. So it just <laughs> you basically say I'm interested in these sort of sites, and it sees where you are and tries to give you sort of local relevant. Sites so if I said I, I want to look for hotels, and it finds ones that are nearby rather than like Booking dot com for. I, New Zealand or something. I, oh, I, I think it's more like you just tell it your general interests and it will give you stuff that comes up that's relevant to your interests <laughs> rather than dangerous. Rather yeah. than you saying, <laughs> rather than you saying, you know, <laughs> okay, Google, give me a thing. You should put that about paper in the dash anyway because it's a lot, you know, it's a lot faster. Oh, here we go. Anyway, <laughs> Tony's uh, onto, out onto Tony's gaming news. <laughs> Um, well, I don't think we've got much time left for the gaming well, it's news. A short, we? It's a short gaming news. Well, is it? Is it that short? Is it, it short? It, 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 yep. I can see one sentence. Read it. Well, in the, well, Alan, it's a complex story. Once you okay. say, say the headline, you have to start to get into the actual meat of the subject. And right. I don't want to... Have you scrolled uh, down far enough to get to it now? Yeah, I know exactly okay. what the story is. Um, and that's Zucom, um, <laughs> who have released Zucom. Uh, Enemy Unknown, which is now available. Yeah, and it's now available, get this, everybody, on Linux. What's what's enemy unknown? Um, well, no, no. I think you need to call it the full title, which is the Com enemy Zucom, unknown. Um, enemy unknown. And you can help. It's about uh, alien invasions. Oh, um, yeah. So you know, since its inception, the Zucom project has scoured the globe in search of the best and brightest military and scientific personnel to defend Earth from the alien invasion. I, I think this is a quote. Um, today marks the availability of a new technology that would enable even more world-class recruits to join the fight as Zucom Enemy Unknown is released for Linux. Wow. Zucom Enemy Unknown is a Steam Play title that runs on Ubuntu 14.04 and Valve Steam OS. The base game and all the add-on content, including the explosive expansion pack Zucom Enemy Within, with mm-hmm. which you will all be familiar, <laughs> uh, are now available from Steam. Is there uh, someone you should be crediting with that opinion? <laughs> um, this is a press release from... <laughs> <laughs> so this, 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 this was written by... Um, what's his name? What's his name, Tony? Um, um, what, the game or the press yeah, the release? Ga- no, the game. The game is made by um, that famous developer. Uh, yeah. What's his name? Oh. Well, I'd surprise you can't. Oh, remember. it begins with a J. I can't remember. Yeah. Well, you no. Know, well, we're no. really out of time. Jim. Oh dear. We Never are. mind. Anyway, uh, I guess that's the end of well, the news. Well, it's exciting. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Now for some community news. And events. And events. <laughs> Event. <laughs> Event. So GNOME developers Robert Ansel and Ryan Lorty have been working on mere support for GTK+. Yes. Ooh, what so does this, this means mean? That, well, that yes. GNOME apps will run on Unity 8 and Mir, does it? Well... <laughs> So, yeah, the, the whole um, brouhaha about Mia was that, oh, no, it's a display server that, that nobody else is going to support and no apps will run on it and all my legacy apps won't be able to work anymore. And um, so what this is is a stepping stone towards allowing you to run other apps that weren't necessarily designed to run on Mia, mm. on Mia. Cool. And so those ones that are built using GTK, so mm. that's like... No maps. Yeah, so basically most of the, the standard desktop apps currently in the desktop Ubuntu image. Yeah, could potentially run on Mir. I mean, we're not, it's not complete, and there's 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 certain bits missing. And in the blog post, um, Robert goes through some of the the things. I think you can only have a single window, and uh, there's there's some other uh, limitations. But it it shows that the, you know they're working on it, and uh, you know I think. That will Im- that support will improve over time, so it won't just be cute apps. It will be GTK and pos- uh, potentially other toolkits as well. Cool, that can work on Mia, which is good news, right. I think. Yes. Um, how much work is required to get it to the same standard as native X GTK? I have no idea. I'm guessing it's probably quite a lot. Yeah, I imagine there is a fair amount of work to do over the next year or so before we hit an LTS release where. Maybe X isn't installed. Maybe. So is this work being paid for by somebody with a vested interest in Mia? Uh, yeah, us. Right. <laughs> Robert works for Canonical. Right. <laughs> uh, I think Ryan does as well, actually. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, they're, they're, 
they're uh, canonical guys. And Robert works on Mir and the display server stack. So, right. you know, it's it's his department. Um, and I know, I know um, Ollie Reese, which is who is his boss or his boss's boss, uh, has been uh, answering like Q and A stuff about Mir and putting out you know updates on the various mailing lists on Tinternet uh, about this. So, yeah, keep your eyes peeled and. And is this stuff being sort of pushed upstream into the GTK toolkit? I don't, I don't know. I don't know whether it's um, uh, whether it's something they would accept well, or yes, not. Yes, that's what I know, I'm wondering. Yeah, I know there's been some abrasive comments in the past about other um, upstream developers not accepting anything that supports specifically Mia. Yeah, and I know the Kwin uh, maintainer has said that in the past. Um, but you know, we'll have to see if if if. I'm, I'm sure they will attempt to upstream anything that is appropriate to be upstreamed. You know, I'm sure there's some bits of this that are in Mia mm. and some bits of it that are in GTK. Yeah. And those bits that could be upstreamed, I'm sure they will do the right thing and try and upstream them. It will make no mm-hmm. sense not to. But if those patches are rejected for whatever reason, then we'll have to carry them, unfortunately, in, in Ubuntu. Hey-ho. Mm. Next up, uh, 14, Ubuntu 14.10 Alpha 1 is due out this Thursday. Or last Thursday. Well, last Thursday, was it? Yes. Okay, then. It's, well, it's out now. <laughs> <laughs> Specifically on Wednesday, the 26th of June. Isn't that today? Today. As we record. No, I re- yes. 25th today. So, Thursday, the 26th of June. So tomorrow. tomorrow. Yes. So or Thursday. last week. Or today. <laughs> or it's only, sometime in the past. It's only last week if you haven't listened to this episode when it was released and you're listening late. Yes. Okay, I'm well. glad we cleared that up. Alan, so, what's next? <laughs> well, what's in it? Uh, so, yeah, it's the usual uh, Alpha 1 uh, in the in the cycle. So everything's frozen in the archive uh, while everyone's testing this image. When's 14 or 4.1G? Oh, uh, yeah. After 14.10 releases. Really? I think so, yeah. Usually oh, the point one is, is after because it includes... Uh, backported stuff that is in the right. next release. Uh, the first one is usually okay. then. Okay. Are you waiting for an LTS to tell you to? Yeah, I've got that on my uh, my HTPC as well. I'm waiting. Mm. Mm. So the the other thing that's interesting about this uh, is I think we mentioned this previously that we're now making an ISO image which has Unity eight and Mir on it. So oh, it's yeah. it's stripped down and doesn't have Unity seven and and all the other stuff the the normal desktop image has it's it's you know for people to try out um but it has yeah unity 8 the new unity on it so people can try that out if they want to cool i feel so retro on 1204 (laughs) (laughs) you're on 1204 still yeah wow lts why don't you upgrade because i'm only doing ltss and um, (laughs) it doesn't give me a button (laughs) right so yeah so normally we don't pop up the prompt yep. that says until the point one. Yeah. Uh, and I'm just checking the release schedule, actually, just to tell you oh, exactly when you. the date is, because I'm nice like that, and I was trying to hold you off for that. Um, oh. Uh, <laughs> oh, dear. I have no idea when it is, then. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, no, no idea. 12 or 4 it is? Yeah. Mm. So, cool. Interesting. And finally? Uh, finally, uh, it's kind of an event, but it's a community news thing. Uh, for uh, next week... <laughs> Don't start this again. So the week of the 30th of June yep. through till uh, the 4th of July, we're having a Core Apps Hack Days. And we've done these uh, a number of times in the last few months. The idea is that we have a bunch of apps that are community developed uh, that are for the phone. So, for example, the calendar, the clock, weather, music, RSS, reader, file manager, terminal, and... Uh, we have some bugs still in them and some work to do before release. And we wanted to uh, have a bunch of hack days to plow through some of those bugs and do a bit of testing and uh, uh, get people you know, trying out the apps and seeing if there are any bugs in them and filing them and triaging and getting the stuff fixed. And so we're doing that next week. But the thing we're doing differently is last all the previous hack days, we've only focused on the core apps. What we're doing this time is we've said to people, bring along your own app as well. So if you're, you know, you've developed a, an app for Ubuntu phone and it's not quite finished yet, you can bring it along and maybe get other people to help you finish it or get advice from people who work on the platform or mentoring from people who've also developed apps, that kind of thing. 
So, yeah, contact me on IRC if you want to get included in that or just turn up next week to hash ubuntu-app-devel on IRC. What sort of skills do you need to get involved? Actually, we, uh, it's a brilliant question, Tony. Uh, so, you know, if you're a QML developer, then great, you've, got a, you've, you've been kick-started. Uh, we also um, have some uh, parts of the apps that are written in C++. So the file manager, the terminal, and reminders app all have some C++ components with the QML doing the front end. So if you know C++ or QML, great. But the good thing is if you don't know those, you can still get involved as well because we have everything needed to jumpstart installing the SDK and getting started with all the all the tools. And because QML is really easy. It is really easy. We've got tutorials to get people going. We've got API documentation, all that kind of stuff. And if you just turn up and say you want to help, we'll point you in the right direction. Uh, and we have had people who've turned up at previous hack days who've then got on to help maintain some of the core apps. So it's been worthwhile, and the core apps developers tell us they really like the idea of the hack days because it allows them to focus attention and bring new people in. And, yeah, it's it's really good fun. Hmm. Cool. Excellent. Good. Well, right. and further to extend the uh, idea of me talking about things that I don't know about, we're going to talk about OggCamp. <laughs> tell us about um, OggCamp, Tony. I know that you've, you've had a lot of involvement this year. OggCamp is a free software unconference, it says here. Um, <laughs> free, free culture unconference, I stand corrected, mm, yes. um, which is taking place this year on the 4th and 5th of October at the Oxford Hotel in Oxford in the United Kingdom. Um, you can get tickets and find out more information about OGCAMP, how it works and who goes along and what sort of things happen there at ogcamp.org. The tickets are free or you can choose to donate whatever you want to uh, help the running of the conference. It's run yeah. by community. Nobody's making any money out of it. It's not a commercial operation. People mm-hmm. just chip in and volunteer their time. Um, there's a nice history page on the ogcamp.org website which says about the uh, how it was all founded and how it all got started um, and the sort of things that have happened at previous events. If you'd like to help out with organising the event, get in touch. Um, how does one do that, Mark? Uh, <laughs> that's a good question. We don't actually have a... Um, maybe, well, you could you can tweet at OggCamp on Twitter. Or um, if you're interested in sponsoring, if you go to the website, my email address is there and you can, uh, you can get in touch with me about that. Or if you want to get involved with the crew, um, you can contact Les Pounder on Twitter. He's Big Les P. Yep. And uh, we have some sponsors. We do have some sponsors. This is new Mm. information, so pin back your lugger holes. (laughs) So uh, we had our first confirmed sponsor, and our first gold sponsor is Ubuntu again. So we've had some some money given to us from the Ubuntu Community Fund to help run the event, Mm. which is excellent. It's the second year in in a row that Ubuntu have supported us, and this money comes from donations from the Ubuntu community. Yes, it's great. Proper community funded Probably event. Community funded. Yeah. Speaking of which, um, our our second sponsor and our first silver sponsor is the OGCAMP community themselves. So Tony mentioned that you can chip in when you pay for a ticket, and enough people have now done that uh, that we they sort of earn themselves a silver sponsorship. So I think that's def- brilliant. That's definitely yeah. worth a mention. Yeah. So the whole thing with with those two sponsors, we now have enough money to actually do the event um, with the money we had left over from last year, just from community money so that's really amazing brilliant so but you, that yeah so Please. you don't want any more no no no, no, no. Oh, okay right, <laughs> right. that's, that's just conference. that means that's that means, just to have the event that that's... means that the event can happen that it... means that we've got the venue and the equipment it doesn't mean that we've got a party it doesn't mean we've got things Beanbags. to give away mm. it doesn't yes being bad yeah. yeah no no space invaders machines yet so Sweet. if you if you um, would like to sponsor us or if you think your company might want to sponsor us then please do get in touch we have various uh, levels at which you can sponsor us and various things that you get as a result one of which is being plugged on this show for the next three months so you can't go wrong there <laughs> <laughs> excellent so, so you're so, going to plug Ubuntu for the next three months uh, <laughs> on, on uh, this sorry. show <laughs> on this show what hey? <laughs> we normally don't talk about it at all um <laughs> But yeah, okay, so godcamp.org to get your tickets and you can come along yes. and have a great time. See you there. Yes. The Ubuntu podcast needs you. Yes, you. If you hear something that enthralls, exasperates or elevates you, tweet at UUPC or email podcast at ubuntu-uk.org. You can also talk to us on the telephone, Skype, Facebook and Google+. Find links to all these places on our website, podcast.ubuntu-uk.org. Please do get in touch. I mean it. Just one message. Just to know there's someone out there who cares. 
And that's it for episode 13. We'll be back next week um, when we'll be talking about some cool technology. <laughs> <laughs> mm, vague status. Yeah. <laughs> We'd sure like to keep that? them guessing. Yeah, yeah, of course. Leave them wanting more. Yes. Uh, we've also got a command line love, I think. We've got double bubble command line love. Wow. Ooh. Oh, yeah. We'll get it's double good. the downloads. It's really good. And uh, <laughs> some feedback as well from listeners. Yeah, of so, course. Yeah, uh, it'll be good. If you're listening live, don't go away. But uh, if you're not, thanks very much for listening. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.